Hi everyone. A little while ago I made a quick overview video of Cloud Labs Community Edition. Now Cloud Labs is developed and maintained by Nikolai Anderson and the MS Endpoint Manager team. The solution provides functionality of rotating passwords for a given local admin account on Azure AD joined devices. It uses proactive remediations in Intune to get that done. It kind of replicates the functionality available in the original local admin password solution. Until Cloud Labs, there really wasn't, in my opinion, a great solution for the problem in cloud devices. As I mentioned in the previous video, Cloud Labs is free to use under the MIT license. You'll accrue Azure charges when using it, but there's no charge for the software itself, provided you follow the MIT license terms. So why a new video? Well, the team have just released a new major update, and I want to be the person to show you how to upgrade that if that's all right. So uh, they've updated a few things in the back end, such as logging from the client, uh, for instance, whether the password change was successful or not. They've also streamlined the code so it relies less on the managed dependencies functionality. As well as that, they've made improvements around shared secrets to make the solution even more secure. As with the original video, I'm gonna go through the setup and upgrade procedure in some detail. Firstly though, there's the documentation. It's incredibly well written, as always, and we get to it by going to msnpointmanager.com. So if we head over to here and then just do Cloud Labs. From here, it's really just a case of uh, scrolling down and you see all this information that I've just been through with you. We've got a releases section here. If this is your first time installing Cloud Labs, please use the setup instructions. They've been updated with the right instructions to get this done. So please use those first if you don't already have Cloud Labs installed. If you do though, and you want to upgrade, we've got this releases section here. Click that, and then we've got version 1.1. So first thing you see in this is the update instructions. So we can go on through those in just a few seconds, but here are the updates and what has actually been done to make this a better product and it's taken a little while but the team have been hard at work and you know doing other things in life so it's 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 good that they've had the chance to do this for now we'll jump into the update instructions and take a look it is very simple i'm going to go through this step by step so i won't scroll through it with you just yet but we'll go through it in a moment on my side i've got uh, the cloud apps portal already working the original cloud apps portal so this is uh you know, going to be updated with all of the new features that we just talked about. Okay, so to the instructions. Firstly, we should go to the app registrations and we are going to grab the application client ID. And all we're going to do with that is we're going to copy it. So let's jump over and do that. So Azure AD, app registrations, I have Cloud Labs portal. I'm going to grab my application ID. Copy that and stick it in my notepad file. Okay, what next? We are going to uh, find the resource group with Cloud Labs in it, and then make a note of storage account, function app, key vault, app service, and log analytics workspace. And just make a note of those because we're gonna need them in a parameter in the next step. Okay, so go to the resource group, So this one here and we need the name of the storage account so let's grab these i'll just grab these and put them into my uh, notepad file it took me a few seconds okay that's all done right so i've got all of my uh parameters that I need to use. We'll head over back to the documentation. So we have uh, done this. This is the thing I use to grab all of this stuff. All good. So now we need to, to click on deploy to Azure. Click that. I want to move that over to my other screen just so we can see it over here. And then what we got asked for is the resource group and then the region, the function app name, portal, web app name, all this kind of stuff. Let's go through it on the right hand side here. So you don't know it's the right, do you? but it is my right screen that I'm moving to when I do that. So resource group, I'm going to choose cloud labs because that was the original one that I put it in. And then we get the function app name. Let's grab that. 
function app here. Portal web app name is the app service. Uh, log analytical workspace. Yep. Key vault name. Storage account name. And the application ID. Okay, the update frequency, I'm going to put it to one. Love 16 characters, that's great. And then we get to choose the allowed characters, and those, those seem like good characters. No numbers. Oh, there you go. Yeah, those are good characters. Perfect. Okay, so then let's just move back to the documentation and see we're not missing anything. So we get to choose all of this information. Awesome. Uh, it says, I mean, it, we should be clear, don't use the examples here. None of this is useful to you, unless you happen to have named them all exactly the same as, as what these guys did when they did their documentation. These are all examples of what you should put. Only use the things in your environment. If, you, if you're missing one, you have to find it before you run the upgrade. It's just not going to work if you guess. So then we choose, uh, where is it? Review and create. Okay, done. So we're here, choose review and create. Validation passed, excellent. And then we just choose create. Up on the top right there, you see a deployment in progress. And let's give us a few seconds. Okay, deployment succeeded. That looks pretty good. Uh, we'll head back to the docs. Yep, that's them. Okay, so you might remember from uh, the original version of Cloud Labs, we had these two uh, detect and remediate PowerShell scripts. So we're going to need those, but they've been updated for this version. So we're going to jump into the uh, GitHub and grab those files just now. So we have detection. Go in there and grab this. So that's the, it's not a lot of detection going on there, but you know, it, it does the job. So we'll just copy this over into VS Code. That's my old one there. So we'll grab a new one, paste that there and save that as Detection. Uh, notice the old one's called detect, actually. Um, that's interesting. So yeah, it's detection. PS1. Good. Uh, and then back over to this site. Go back, remediate. Let's copy that. And put that into VS Code as well. Save that. as remediate. Okay, remediate is a little bit bigger than detect. Uh, detection, actually, I need to remove detect, otherwise I'll accidentally start using that one. So we've got those two files. Great, so what we're gonna do now first is jump over to our, uh, as you can see here, it says we need to head into the resource group and get the function app. So over to the function app, this one here, and in here, we need to go to functions. And then in each of these, we need to do a get function URL and copy the function URL to notepad. And then in the other one, set secret, get function URL, copy that into notepad as well. Excellent. Okay, so we've done that back over to the docs. And so we've done that. Excellent. So we're going to use that in set client URI in remediation.ps1. So we'll open remediation, that one there, and set client URI. So we're just going to stick that function URI in here. And then the same for Send client event URI. Okay, it's done. What's next? Uh, check the local administrator account. Search for it. Set to this. I think it was local admin. Now, crucially, it needs to be set to the um, same admin account and if you don't set it to the same admin account then it will create a new admin account and use that one 
and then send client event. You can also toggle this to true if you like, but it's set to false by default, but it will not use the, the functionality to send the client event back to the server. Just show you what it looks like if you set that to true. It's currently set to false. Just change that to true. Save that and we're good to go. Okay. So now it's a case of uploading that. So we're going to just jump over to my endpoint manager console, which is this one here. So from here, we're going to go into reports and then down to endpoint analytics, proactive remediations. And we've got this cloud labs client. Just click that properties and then choose our, choose the settings edit. And then we've got the detection script and the remediation script. So I'm just going to go in and add my new detection script that I've just created here, which is today's date. That's done. And then remediation script, which I've just created here. Excellent. Make sure these settings are set correctly. But again, if this is the first time you've, cre you've, you've created these remediation scripts, um, because it's the first time installing Cloud Labs, you shouldn't be following this video. You should be using the original video or a new video that I create on how to set this up from scratch because this isn't the right the right video for you. Uh, or just follow the awesome documentation on msnpointmanager.com to set this up from scratch. For now, we'll choose review and save and save. And that is it. So what we've done is updated uh, the Cloud Labs platform from version one to version 1.1. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I want to let this run uh, in the next couple of days to see how it works. But in the meantime, that's how you update it. It all seems to have gone well. I'm going to jump over to my Cloud Labs portal to check if it still actually works. Uh, let's check. It does. It's still there. I'm happy with that. I want to test this out in the background and uh, come back to you in a few days and let you know how it's gone. But thanks for watching.